Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. You're watching Ken's Cuts. Thanks so much for stopping in on today's episode. Um, it's Saturday. Central New Jersey's been battling this heat all week, and we finally had a little bit of a reprieve yesterday. Today, it's about 82 degrees. It's overcast, cloudy. Nice little breeze. Humidity's still around 60%, so moving around outside, you're still going to break a little sweat, but at least that sun is not beating down on our heads. Um, last weekend's episode, I was actually splitting under my tent that was a 10 by 10. Um, I ran that on Saturday and Sunday. And then during the week, I think it was Tuesday evening, we had some crazy rain and wind. And I had left the tent up. So I came out here Thursday after work. And I'm mowing. And I come out behind the shed. And the tent is a shambles. The wind got a hold of it. I had a couple of the legs, what I thought was secured, and the fourth corner had been tied to a bucket full of wood that I had inadvertently moved, so that wasn't tied down. And the wind got a hold of it and literally pulled it up, up over top of the, the cylinder and was jammed up, and some of the metalwork's broken, so I'm going to have to replace that sucker. Anyway, uh, today's episode, I want to talk about a couple of fun new orders that came in this week. and. Uh, the most recent one was this morning. I uh, have a dear friend that's looking for some mini splits for a tabletop stove that she just ordered. And it'll be coming in this week. So let me get set up and I'll start pulling out some pieces here and I'll talk to you as we move along. So stick around. I also had a coworker who I last saw back in around 2006 uh, came to me about two weeks ago and bought hickory and white oak for a brand new offset smoker that he bought. Um, it was a referral through another coworker of mine and uh, Joe was here, grabbed up a few bundles. I had um, offered him some beech nut and some cherry chunks to season his new pit rather than waste the hickory and the white oak on a, you know, four hour burn in. And uh, he messaged me on Thursday and said, Hey, I know you mentioned you have pecan. Please let me know when it's ready. So I said to him, yeah, the last batch of pecan I just opened up about a four or six weeks ago. Uh, it's going to need a little bit of time, you know, but I'll let you know. And then my wheels got turning and I realized that back in April when that pecan first came in, I had done uh, a, a small split session on my old box store splitter put some of that up and I had made a video called Imperfectly Perfect Pecan. So that stuff's been sitting here for, you know, three and a half months. And um, so I, I actually called Joe this morning and I said, hey, I'm going to dig into some of this pecan. Unfortunately, it's on the bottom of the stack. So I've basically got to flip the stack and get to the, to the uh, four and a half month old stuff on the bottom. So I said, you know, hypothetically, if it's ready to go, um, let me know how many bundles. And he said, you know, three to four bundles, whatever you can, you know, squeeze out of the stuff that you have. So I'm going to work on those next. All right, guys. So the most recent order this morning was, uh, from Debbie, uh, Debbie's daughter's, a uh, dear friend of my daughter. And she bought a tabletop stove. Um, she's got a master's degree. She is a scientist. She actually took classes in college um, in dendrology, which is the study of trees. And she knows about her wood. And she was here uh, two weekends ago to have dinner with us. She's actually a subscriber to the channel. So if you're watching, Deb, this one's for you. And uh, she was here. She wanted to see my machine. She can appreciate a machine. Her family has property up in Northeast Pennsylvania that they used, um, you know, to sell lumber out of. So, and she's, you know, pretty good with a mall and a splitting axe. So she's well-versed. So she messaged me this morning and said, hey, I just ordered a tabletop. It's a solo stove knockoff and uh, I'm going to need a box of your mini splits. So I'm putting this together today and I've got oak and cherry chunks that I'm going to break down for her. and um, I try and keep everything in that four to five inch range. So I've got a piece of here as a sample. Um, these are chunks and cutoffs that I've, 
I've scored from a, a connection. Um, he's selling off his cuts and chunks um, from, you know, trimming down bundles that he's selling um, two towns away. And uh, he offered me up these chunks for a really darn good price. And I said, absolutely, I can definitely use them. So I'll take these oak splits, these little chunks, and break them down, make my mini splits. And then over here in the woodshed, I have some cherry chunks that I'm going to break down. So it'll be a really nice blend, and I'm going to put together a milk crate full for Debbie. And she'll be by this week to pick it up. So I start pulling some pieces out. What I do is throw them into a, a big veggie crate, and then we'll get the machine warmed up. Um, and I just go through the bucket, and I look for anything that's, you know, four and a half inches. I use this as my gauge. And anything that's, you know, in that four inch range, we're going to pull out. I've got a lot of tiny little pieces here. But there's a lot of in that four inch range, so they'll, they'll make the cut. Because when you've got a little tabletop stove, you want to drop them in and have them fall nicely into the bed of coals. You don't want them to get jammed up or stuck or stand up or, you know, form little teepees that can, you know, be troublesome as the, the fire is burning. But a lot of these chunks are absolutely beautiful. I'm going to just pull a few of these out. And we'll run them through the machine. A lot of these are short. I'll use them for my own personal use. But here's another one. That's a good four inch piece. So, we'll pause the camera and I'll be back in just a minute when we get the crate full.
All right, guys, so <clears throat> the axis definitely makes quick work of these mini splits. Um, I actually did an oversized veggie crate for Debbie. Uh, she's a dear friend of the family. I normally send out my mini splits in regular 12 by 12 mil crates, but this is an oversized, and it's about one and a half times the amount that you'd normally get in a regular mil crate. So these are ready to go, and uh, didn't take that very long. Um, at the end there, I put you into time lapse. Um, still working through the noise canceling feature on these mics, so put the mics away and just let the machine run in time lapse there at the very end. So um, stick with me. I'm going to move on to the next task. Okay, guys, so the next fun order that we have, as I mentioned earlier in this video, was that a return customer, uh, Joe, who was a coworker of mine, asked if um, I would let him know when my pecan was ready. And the balance of the pecan that I did just a few weeks ago is right here. It's probably was done early June, so it's probably been about five weeks, six weeks. So I'm confident that that's not ready. But my wheels got turning, and I remember doing a video back in April with the box door splitter with the Husky. Um, just to experiment with that pecan and I had done a, re a video early April that was called imperfectly perfect pecan and I busted up half a dozen or so rounds and anyway I went back to Joe and I said listen I've got three month old plus pecan that was cut um, it was cut in March it was split early April so um, at the time, the moisture was around 29 to maybe 32%. And I said to him, uh, you know, I'll let you know. So I actually called Joe this morning and I said, hey, I'm going to be out in the wood yard. I've got some other orders. And uh, I'm recalling that I had, you know, done that batch of early splits in April. So off camera here before um, I kicked the camera back on, I went through, tossed a bunch of the newest freshest stuff off to the side and got down into this pile that was split early April so it's like three months or so and at that 29% level it's been sitting here drying you know in my normal small splits so I've got a few pieces of it here so the click test sounds ready sounds like it's ready to go and uh, it sounded pretty darn good and I said well let me go take a look so I went and took these four pieces and cut them all in half. And I told Joe I would let him know about, you know, the moisture levels. And lo and behold, 19.3%. 12%. There's a fresh white surface. This was an inner. 18%. Sixteen point oh. So I am pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. Eighteen point four. Eighteen point eight. Eighteen point eight. So this stuff in an offset smoker. Sixteen point five. In an offset smoker, this stuff's going to be ready to go. Sixteen percent on the button. Um, the trick with the offset smokers, guys, is when they start their pits, they're going to start with a chimney full of charcoal. They lay it in the smoke box, in the fire box. They lay some splits on it. They start rolling smoke. They get the pit up to temperature. They lay their meat in. And as they're cooking, if they're doing, you know, ribs or pulled pork, you know, brisket, long cooks, as they're putting a split every 45 minutes or so just to maintain their temperatures, they're taking additional splits, laying them on the flat top of the, of the firebox. Most manufacturers will put a flat top on it that you can lay your wood right on it and start to preheat it. And if there's any tiny bit of moisture in it, it's working its way out, just sitting there getting warm. And the guys have told me and it's, just, it's, it's amazing how, you know, your wood burns 
Like none of these guys are going back to Home Depot and Lowe's and the corner gas stations buying wood once they come to Ken's Cuts. They take these splits, they lay them up on top of the firebox. They're really warm. They're literally grabbing them with tongs or grabbing them with a mitt, laying them on the coals. And before they can get the wood situated and get the box closed, the wood's starting to catch because it's preheated, it's dry, it's ready to go. When uh, one of the last customers that came um, found me and he, he bought some of my splits and he was still working through the balance of a half cord that he had purchased from another gentleman who claimed it was seasoned and ready to go. He would preheat the wood, he would lay it on the firebox, lay it into the smoker, and the wood would lay there and hiss, and all the moisture would cook out of it. And he said, that stuff's going in my fire pit, Ken. And he goes, I'm, I'm sticking with you. You've got a customer for life. And guys, I only started doing this in April of 22. And two years plus, I'm, you know, it means the world to me when the customers say that to me, that they're, you know, happier than a pig in slop with, you know, with my cuts. And anyway, so... Without further ado, I'm going to go grab the bundling station and the shrink wrap. And I promised Joe that I could squeeze out three, if not four bundles of pecan as long as it was ready. So off camera, I'm going to give him a quick shout and let him know that the stuff is ready. And uh, give me a couple minutes and I'll be right back to you. Stick around. All right, guys. So it's kind of tight quarters here. But um, I'm going to see what I can do here to set up the bundler. As I tell everybody, I got microbrew status configuration, if you will, over here. Let me pan this up a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. So I went ahead and grabbed all those pieces I just cut for Joe for moisture testing. Tossed them into the bottom of this stack here. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab fistfuls of these, drop them in. I left Joe a voicemail, I told him this stuff is ready. And I would get him at least three bundles. I actually text him on the phone. Because he's probably out rolling smoke right now as I'm recording this. Um, and if he gets back to me and wants to come by later today or tomorrow, can always swing through but I mean you can see how dark this stuff is it's been it's been sitting here exposed to the weather exposed to these 90 degree temperatures that we're seeing we had heat indices in the last two weeks over a hundred it's been pretty hot and mother nature is our friend when we're Trying to get this stuff seasoned. So, making these bundles is like doing a Jenga puzzle. I'm not the fastest bundler out there either. This is what I use because I'm not doing crazy high volumes of 20, 40, 50 bundles a day. I haven't taken the plunge to buy an Amish bundler or a Wolf Ridge bagger or anything like that. I just can't justify it in my head because I'm not, pardon my back, I'm not using bags for smoking wood. I want the customers to see the wood, see the splits, know what they're buying. And I wrap these super tight and I tell everybody 
when you get them home, keep them on a porch, in a breezeway, in your shed, in your garage. The last thing you want to do is sit them on a rack next to your smoker when they're wrapped in plastic. Because any moisture that gets in is not going to be a meat smoker's friend. That's for darn sure. Because the moisture is going to turn the wood punky and we don't need that. But this is a respectable bundle. If I do say so myself. One of these days I'm actually going to put a bundle on my bathroom scale just for fun. Part of the reason that I did the test with the Husky back in April was A, to see how it would split because pecan was new to me, and B, I knew I wanted to get some ready because I had another source where I was getting pecan and selling it to some of my OG customers. And they got down to the point where they were using it very sparingly and blending it with other, you know, oak and whatnot. Because I told them I was running out. And they said, well, let us know what you can do. And my tree service got a hold of me telling me he was cutting down pecan. Part of me couldn't believe it. And I said, I'll take it. So I was able to open up few rounds to get the process started. And it's a darn good thing I did because these guys give their left hand for pecan, anybody that's been using it. And when I asked Joe, I said, hey, what makes you ask for pecan all of a sudden? You just came and got white oak and hickory. And he said, oh, I've been smoking meat since 2015. I've been using pellet smokers. I've been buying pecan pellets. I like the the uh, mild flavor. It's me and my son, and that's what we like. So if you can get your hands on some, I said, well, I have some. Let me see what I can do. So that's two ready. I guarantee Joe at least three. Might be able to swing four out of this. It still works at the shop where I know him from 2006. And he drives through my area twice a day to work to and from. So if he can't get it the, over the weekend, he can definitely get it during the week. The last time he was here, we did a porch pickup. And he just leaves the money in a safe place. And that works for me. And on my bundle cards that I've talked about before, I don't have a listing for pecan. So, I'm not going to waste the cards. I'm just going to make them up. We write on the plastic. I got to be very careful here. This new stuff that I split. These bunks sacked here, and I feel like it wants to go over. I will have to address that as soon as I'm done here with Joe's bundles. 
All right, guys, that's going to about wrap this one up. Um, I confidently have three bundles here for Joe. I don't have quite enough pretty splits on the bottom of that pile because my first experience uh, with this pecan on the Husky left me with some limb wood that was quite twisted and stringy and just doesn't meet my standards. So I'm not going to try and scrape up a fourth bundle. I don't want to upset Joe. Anyway, I sent him a message and I let him know that there's at least three ready. And that's about going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks a lot for sticking with the end. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button and that like button. And share it with the rest of your wood hound and meat smoking friends. I appreciate, appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you again for stopping by. And until next Sunday, get outside and get cutting. Have a good week, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.